you have this chapter all done. <laughs> so homework 19 here is talking about the domain and the range. And on one of those previous pages that you probably did with Jane, you did do some stuff with domain, and you found out that your domain are your x values, and your range is your y values. So instead of just singly listing them, you're going to do the domain and the range as an interval. So when you think about your x values, you're thinking about the x-axis, and the x-axis goes from left to right on your graph. So when I'm going to do my domain, I'm going to look for my farthest left point. The farthest left point on my x-axis would be at negative 3 to my farthest right point. The farthest to the right I go on my x-axis, if I could draw straight, would be at 5. Now we have to do that interval notation thing, so we have to put the end marks on there. If I have the filled in circle, that's when I use the bracket end mark. So on the negative 3, it's going to have a bracket because that point is filled in. On the 5, we have an open circle, so on the open circle, we have the parenthesis end mark. So for my domain, I have points going from negative 3 to 5. That's how wide my graph is, if you want to think of it that way. For my range, the range is the y values because they go from smallest to largest. We're going to look at our graph from bottom to top. So the bottom point on my graph for a y value is going to be down there at negative 5. The top point on my graph, the highest one, goes up to a y value of 4. Again, I have to have my end marks. The negative 5 has a filled in circle, so we're going to have a bracket. The 4 has an open circle, so that end has the parenthesis. So the bracket means you're touching that point, basically. The open circle, the parenthesis, means you're not touching that point. So when you think about range, you're talking talking about going from the bottom to the top, how tall it goes, right? From the very bottom to the top. So number two here, if I look at that one, if I'm going to do my domain. My domain, I'm going from left to right. My farthest left x value is at Negative 2, yep. The farthest right point is at 5. So I went from negative 2 to 5. The negative 2 is going to have parenthesis, and the 5 would have bracket, exactly. My range. My range was starting on the bottom going to the top. So my bottom point is at negative 4. My top point is at 2, the negative 4 has bracket, and the 2, parenthesis. All right, the third one looks a little different. So I put it on there because I like to throw things on that look a little different. My domain, my domain going from left to right. So my domain would be going from... Negative 3 to 3. So negative 3 to 3. The negative 3 is going to have a bracket, and the 3 is going to have a parenthesis, right? That part's pretty normal. This is the weird part. <laughs> the range. The range. My bottom point to my top point. So the bottom is at... The bottom's at negative 4, yep. And the top is at negative 4 to 5, right? Goes all the way up to 5. 
Now, the end marks for those. The negative 4 is in the middle of the graph. In the middle of the graph, it's like having a filled in dot, a filled in dot, a filled in dot. You are touching that point. So that point, if it's in the middle of the graph, is going to have a bracket on it. It doesn't show a big dot there, but we know that the graph is continuous. There's not a hole there. Same thing on the top. The top is kind of deceiving because you've got two different points up there. But if either of them is filled in, you are touching it at some point. We're touching it over here on the left. So that end is also going to have a bracket. If they were both open circles, then I'd have a parenthesis. But if one of them is filled in, then you are touching it at that point. So you are going to have a bracket. So if it's in the middle of the graph or if I've got more than one end and if any of them is filled in, then you are going to use the bracket on that. So my range, negative 4 to 5 brackets on both ends.